Greetings, students. Mr. Little here. And today we're going to talk about planning your DBQ. This applies to all AP Social Studies DBQs. That includes AP US, AP Euro, and AP World. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about how to get you a kick butt DBQ planned out and ready to go. So in this presentation, as within every video in the series, I will be using the 2019 Portuguese and Indian Ocean DBQ. And so if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and grab the essay from the College Board website or access the slides in the description below. Well, with that said, let's talk about planning. So what should a DBQ look like? Well, here I have just the general DBQ outline, which talks about your first paragraph and what it's going to have in there, as well as your body paragraphs and what they're going to have in there. And note also, you are not required to have a concluding paragraph in a DBQ. For more specifics, as well as any elements of the body paragraphs, please see those individual videos. So I've got a planning acronym. I know there's tons of acronyms out there, but my planning acronym is called PBR. It stands for parse the prompt, brain dump and buckets, and reasoning choice. These three steps you should take before you begin to write anything at all, even your thesis. Step number one, parse the prompt. And this is a fancy way of simply saying, figure out what the prompt is asking, because I cannot tell you the number of essays I've read where a student does not respond to the prompt. It's really important that you find out what the prompt is asking, because the prompt is not in the form of a question. So consider rephrasing it into a question. Instead of evaluate the extent to which Portuguese transformed maritime trade in the Indian Ocean, maybe ask, how did the Portuguese transform trade in the Indian Ocean? Or why did the Portuguese transform maritime trade in the Indian Ocean? This is one way to really easily figure out what the prompt is asking. Also, pay attention to the proper nouns and to the verbs. These can give clues. The Portuguese maritime trade in the Indian Ocean transformation. So clearly, we're not going to be writing a paper about Ming China. We're not going to be writing about the Aztec Empire. We're going to be writing about Portugal in the Indian Ocean. Look for the time frame. This, again, might seem like a tiny thing, but I read a lot of essays over my years as a grader where students didn't get points because their essay was not written in the correct time frame. In this case, it's the 1500s. Now, when I was in high school, my AP US teacher actually gave me this formula for figuring out how many things you were going to have to talk about. And I don't know if I actually used it on the exam, but if it might help you, I'm going to give it to you here. And that is nouns times verbs equals the total number of topics you need to address. We have two verbs, evaluate and transformed, three nouns, Portuguese, maritime trade, Indian Ocean, for a total of six. And so you would need to evaluate the Portuguese, maritime trade in the Indian Ocean. And you would also need to evaluate the transformation of slash by the Portuguese, maritime trade, and the Indian Ocean. So you have six potential topics to look at here. Now, all of this is to say, you need to read the prompt and make sure you respond directly to it. Now, maybe this isn't an issue for you, but if this is an issue for you, I want to really strongly suggest that you follow some of the tips here, such as rephrasing the prompt into a question or following the noun times verb formula. Whatever works better for you, but it's really critical that you respond to what the prompt is asking. Once you've parsed out the prompt, it's time to dump your brain. And the key to this, and I cannot stress this enough, is you must do this before you read any of the documents. If you don't, the whole purpose is going to be defeated. Once you have read the prompt and parsed the prompt, you need to take two to three minutes to write down five pieces of information about this topic that you already know, no matter what it is, no matter how tangential it seems, okay? You need to take the time and you need to do this. And you might be wondering, why do I have to do this, Mr. Little? It's because once you start reading those documents, you are going to get tunnel vision, brain dump, a few things that you already know. So for example, when I looked at this prompt, five things came to my mind. Fosco de Gama, the Car Act, Spices, Trading Post, and the Mughal Empire. Now, maybe some of those things are already mentioned in the documents, and maybe some of them aren't. The whole point is, I have them down, so I'm not going to forget them because they're written right there in my piece of paper. That way, I don't get tunnel vision when analyzing the documents. The next step to organizing our thoughts is creating what we call buckets. And you can draw these. The buckets are your responses to the prompt. Because remember, we're laying out a historically defensible thesis, which is going to create a line of reasoning. So each bucket is a line of reasoning. Each bucket is going to become a paragraph. Now, some teachers emphasize that you only need two paragraphs, but others recommend three because the third paragraph could be used to demonstrate complexity. But before you read your documents, consider assigning themes or specific events related to the prompt to your bucket. So for example, here you can see on the right, I've just given generic course themes to each bucket, economic transformation, social transformation, political transformation. I haven't read the documents yet. I don't know what I'm going to find. But the whole point is I am thinking ahead that possibly I might find some of these things. And as I go through the documents, I can pick them apart and put them in each bucket. So let's say I I read through the documents and I find that some of them don't actually fit really well into the buckets that I have created. That is okay. As you can see up here on the right, I have modified my buckets from economic 
to trade, since there was more about trade than there was about general economic activity. And I've changed social transformation to the role of Muslim merchants transformation, because there are documents that specifically talk about the role of Muslim merchants changing in the Indian Ocean. It's okay to modify your buckets to fit your documents. That's not a bad thing to do. That's okay. I recommend placing all seven documents, even if you don't intend to use all seven documents, which you should, place them anyways. While you read each document, you should summarize and take notes to help keep them organized. Literally just say, this document's going to go in bucket one, this document's going to go in bucket two, as well as a couple of brief notes on what it is that you read. Now, some students have asked me, uh, how many documents can I put in a bucket? And I would say one to three. Any more than three, and you're looking at a very, very long paragraph, even if you're only writing two paragraphs that's still using six documents, just cap it at three. Now, once you've got your buckets all set up, the next step is deciding on your reasoning statement. That is your hip, hap, or cap statements, okay? And the reason why you want to decide on this before you start writing, the difficulty of the reasoning statements can send a student into panic mode, and then you won't write effective reasoning statements. So before you start writing anything, before you write your thesis, decide which documents are going to use which reasoning statement. Whether you do your three reasoning statements in one bucket or whether you spread it out to all three, it does not matter. And keep in mind, as you're reading the documents, not every document is made for every reasoning statement. Some documents lend themselves to context or purpose easier. Pick the one that's easiest for you. Pick the reasoning statement that you're best at. Don't be a hero. Just pick the one you're best at and go with it. And look for the ones that are easy. So for example, document three, you should always look at the source first. It will give you a good idea of what it is that you need to do. An anonymous Portuguese court official has written this letter to King Sebastian regarding a peace treaty with the Ottoman Empire. So right off the bat, I know that the Portuguese and the Ottoman Empire were both engaged in trade, either overland or overseas. And I know that they were both arrivals, the Portuguese being predominantly Christian nation and the Ottoman Empire being a Muslim empire. And so right off the bat, I think point of view or purpose would be really easy here because it would be really easy to explain the point of view of a Portuguese court official as it relates to the Ottoman Empire and or or it could be really easy to pick apart the desired outcome of whatever it is that this Portuguese official has to say about the peace treaties. Or document four, you've got the ruler of the Sultanate of Aceh, uh, which is a Muslim state in Southeast Asia, writing a letter to the Ottoman Sultan. Now, in my head, I know that Southeast Asia is a big trading hub. I also know that the Ottoman Empire is a big trading hub. I'm certain that if I wanted to, it'd be really easy to just talk about the context of both of these regions being major trading hubs, or potentially using the common Islamic identity or the common emphasis on trade. I'm sure we could pick apart a purpose from this letter. So again, I'm I'm not even reading the entire document. I'm just looking at the source and seeing what I think might be the easiest one to do. Obviously, I would encourage you to read through it and figure out which one actually is easiest of the four potential reasoning statements. But the point is, decide before you begin writing. I cannot stress that enough. So voila, after I've parsed the prompt and figured out what it's asking, I've created my three buckets. I've put the documents in those three buckets, and I've decided what reasoning skill I'm going to put in each bucket. So now we essentially have our essay structure. We've got our paragraphs. We know where each document is going, and we know where we're doing our reasoning statements. Now would be the time to begin writing your thesis statement. And to show you what a paragraph would look like, this is my suggested paragraph structure for the DBQ. Notice that the description, support, and reasoning all come right after each other. So what might this look like for our hypothetical bucket number one with documents two and five? Well, this is what it might look like. So I'm talking about the transformation of trade, and then I'm going to talk about document five, then I'm going to talk about document five in the support. Then, because I'm not doing reasoning for document five, I'm going to skip that step. Same thing with document two. I'm going to skip the reasoning step. And in between those two, I'm going to talk about the role of the CAREC, that is outside evidence. And if you'd like to know more about how to do outside evidence, please see the video on that. And then I'm going to put documents two and five in conversation at the bottom, and that's complexity. If you'd like to see more about that, please watch the complexity video in this series. The point is, I have planned out my entire essay, and using this paragraph structure, I can plan out each of my paragraphs before I even begin writing. And at that point, once you've planned out the three big parts of your essay, once you've planned out each paragraph, it's really just mad libs at that point. It's really just filling in the blanks. And if you really struggle with writing, I cannot stress enough that you really should spend more time planning. The motto that a number of teachers I've talked to use is plan more, write less. Even if this takes 25 minutes, that's 10 minutes longer than your dedicated planning time. Obviously, you want to keep track of the time, but don't be afraid to sacrifice a little bit of writing time for a little bit of planning time. So I would encourage you to go look at the released DBQs on the College Board website and practice planning out essays and see how long it takes. I sincerely hope this has helped you or given you something to work with, and I want to thank you for joining me. My name is Mr. Little, and I'll see you next time.